I appreciate you being here for the class today, the second part of our series, the CPR for sellers as we study. Uh, I, I want you to look at a, a, a picture here and tell me what, the first image comes to your mind, what do you think of when you see this situation? He's going to die. He's going to die. <laughs> Heart attack. Heart attack. All right, you see something urgent here. You see a situation that requires dire attention. And I'm going to take that acrostic CPR. It stands for cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And I'm going to use it in our study today, but I'm going to transfer it over into the field of real estate. I don't want to over-dramatize. I don't want to be uh, too ultra-dramatic in this. But, I, you know, when you're talking to sellers, there's just situations that you have to talk to them about on the front end before you get the listing that's serious stuff and if you don't have those serious conversations if you're afraid of those serious conversations then you're likely to um, end up with a listing that's overpriced that you can't sell so yesterday we talked about condition uh, today we're going to talk about price and next week we're going to talk about another urgent matter and that is the realtor themselves you, what part you play in the whole process of helping a seller come to terms with price and marketing and what they need to do to get their property market. So yesterday, as I said, we talked about condition. A home like that, that kind of landscaping, etc. Good to go, right? What are some of the things that we discussed? What are some of the things that are important about condition on, on, on property when you're getting ready to list it? Cleanliness. Cleanliness. Curb Inside appeal. and outside. Curb appeal. Curb appeal. Curb appeal is extremely important. What else? Uh, less clutter. All right. Declutter. Mm -hmm. You know, a National Association of Realtors study in 2011 uh, in our region, southwest region of the United States, said that the three most important things that a seller can do to a home condition-wise are all outside. One of them, Bijan, was curb appeal. What do you think the other two outside things were? Three out of the house. The color of the house? The color of the house, <laughs> of the house if it's pink, it might not be appealing. <laughs> well, but from the negative standpoint, that would be the color of the house would be an issue, but it's not the most important thing. Three out of the top five were outside. One of them was the garage door. Because it's such a focal point. Yeah. It is. It's such a focal point. And the other was the front door. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. The front door and the entry area, whether, you know, if it's arched or, or whatever, made a whole lot of difference. So condition is a serious um, discussion that you have to have with sellers whenever you're getting ready to price a property and market it for them. As we said, the realtor also is extremely important in the process. And next, next week, that will be our discussion what, what part you play in the actual process of discussing with them the marketing strategy and how you're going to go about it. So the realtor is ultimately uh, very important because if, if, if we're not, we can't really, can't really get paid in this job if we're not right. a part of it. So you all make a big difference. We'll discuss that next week. But today, I want us to concentrate on what's the most important aspect of CPR for sellers. Price and helping sellers determine the price of their property. And in helping them determine the price of their property, there's a statement I'd like for you to think about up here. The seller has to make three sales on their property, all right? Before you're ever going to get to the closing table, there are three sales that are going to take place on, on a property, okay? The first sale is to the participating realtors, okay? Now let me ask you a question. When I say the first sale is to the participating realtors, that's those folks out there that are going to be showing your property. So you've got to convince them out of, the, out of the gate. I mean, square one, when that thing goes in the MLS, the first day that it's listed, those participating realtors are quite often, they've got searches set up where it drops down into their search that day. Now let me ask you a question. Some of you that have already been showing property a lot. When you're looking at a subdivision, and everything in that subdivision uh, that has sold in the last six months sold between $185,000 and $200,000. And you see a, a, a listing, you pulled up six, and five of the active listings you're going to show are in that price range. And then there's a sixth one that's like $218,000. 
And there's no significant difference in style, in age, or size, or uh, extras. There's nothing to this house that makes it stand out that's different. What do you think about that home before you go out to show properties in that subdivision? You automatically think it's overpriced. Okay, you automatically think that it's overpriced. Are you anxious to make it one of the ones that you show that day? No. Why would you exclude it? Because if they like it, you're going to have to work to get them down where it needs to be. Okay. Because my people are going to look at those comps that I give them and they're going to think it, they're going to know it's overpriced too. Okay. So they're, they're exactly, your, your buyer's going to be educated. We're going to talk about that in just a second. And your first statement, Christine, I like the fact that, that you, if, the, if the agent didn't price it right to begin with, then the likelihood is you're going to have to fight another battle with that agent in the yes. negotiating process. And if they haven't demonstrated competence here, they may not, they're probably not going to demonstrate good competence right. when it comes to negotiating. And it's just too far apart. So what do you do with that property the first day? I let them know that. I said, I just want you to know that the properties we're seeing are in this price range. And this one's priced 10000 more. And I've looked it up. I don't see that there's anything different. We may go in and find out that they've got gold on the floor. Mm -hmm. But I want you to understand that it might be a bigger fight to pull them in okay. to reality. So, so I just you, know you help around. your buyer know then that this that, that it's going to be a tough situation for reality. But what happens if you only have time to show about four listings that It's day? not a priority. Okay, it, it it's not a priority. Back, back yeah. the list. Exactly, and that's my point. With participating realtors, a lot of times we prioritize our searches by what we think is actually doable. Mm -hmm. Is this a situation Absolutely. that can possibly yes. work? So frequently, we might take that one that's way overpriced and just say, if we run out of properties to see, then we'll put this on the next search. You may not even say that to the buyer. A lot of times the buyer doesn't even know that property exists. Mm -hmm. Another thing about that overpriced property is if it's in a neighborhood of 185 to 200, uh, you're, and your buyers won't, won't even go above 210, and they've told you, I don't look at anything above 210, then it doesn't even come up in your search to begin with. Right. And the shame of that is it really should because it qualifies in that price range. Mm -hmm. So. The buyers that we worry about frequently are those that never even get into our properties. And we're going to get those buyers in our properties, and we've got to have the participating realtors buy in to our listings. Okay? So that's battle number one. If we can get the participating realtors to bring in the actual buyers, then we can, get, we can uh, potentially make a sale here. This is your second sale. It's the buyer. Now let me ask you something. Are realtors emotional when it comes to the buying and selling process? So yeah, we we like it, don't we? I yeah. mean, you, you like the euphoria of seeing someone go into home and like what they see and get excited about it. Are buyers that way? I mean, do they buy on emotion? Totally. Totally. Okay. They buy totally on emotion. So uh, we get those buyers in there and they view our properties. And the emotion sometimes is kind of drained out of the moment when they've seen five other listings in this subdivision that are in that 185 to 200 price range, and all of a sudden this one's 216. So, have you ever had them ask you that question when you're out there? Well, these other homes in here are priced at around 200. Why is this one priced at 216? Do they ever ask you that? Oh, yeah. They do. What do you What do you say to that, Bijan? As far as you know, the price, of course, the condition of, depends on the condition of the house inside. One of the things is you do want to do that comp, and then you want to make sure what's in that house that made it to be. Does it have a swimming pool? Does it have a storm shelter? Does it have any extras that the other okay. do not have? And if it doesn't but have any of those extras? If it doesn't extras, have it, then you just move on to okay. let them make the decision. It's an awkward, dis I mean, it's an awkward yeah. discussion to have with them when there's not anything that justifies that Absolutely. price. It's a very awkward discussion to have with them as to why it's priced at 216, especially if it's your own company's listing. Yeah. <laughs> That's very difficult then to say to them, well, I, I, just, I just don't know. So buyers are relatively educated, wouldn't you say? Where do they get their education about properties? From us. From us. From and us. From Internet. 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 Realtor.com. Zestimate. Zest. 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 Zest
So, I mean, they're extremely educated nowadays. And so they comparison shop for homes just like they comparison shop for cars and groceries, etc. Question. Well, I do have a question. Um, and this may not be good for so I guess I'm kind of asking you what you think. But I've had, in the last, you know, few months, I've had a lot of things that have been overpriced. And they've asked me, and they don't just say, well, Christian, what do you think? I'm like, okay, well, you're asking me what I think. And you keep asking me. I don't know. But it could be that they can't afford to, they may be in so some situation, they may not be able. I said, so if you're going to make an offer on this, you're going to have to deal with the fact that they may not be able. They're not maybe not trying to be hard-nosed, because sometimes they'll just love something. Okay. And it's overpriced. And so I have to try to give them, it could be this, or it could be that the roads okay. are just overpriced. So you're, you're you know. wanting verbiage then. Christina's asking for verbiage. What do you say to that buyer? who is uh, asking you, what should we do here? This seems to be overpriced. What should we do? Very good question. Uh, what I would, what I think I would say to that buyer is, uh, what, how complete is your, your education based on everything that we've seen? The buyer's drawing their own conclusions here, and I would probably draw them toward their views of other properties. I might pull those properties out and ask them, some questions like, how does this one differ from this one? How does it differ from that one? How does it differ from this one? And finally, they usually draw their own conclusions about the fact that it really doesn't differ at all except for price. Yeah. And then I would say to them, if you still want to make an offer on this property, then I would just make the offer based on what it looks like it's worth to you. Okay? Yeah. Okay. So the second, the second buy that you've got to have is that of the buyer. So you got to sell it to the participating real estate community first. Then the buyer has to be willing to see the property and actually write a contract on it. But this thing's not over with that buyer because there's a third party that's got to buy in here. And that third party is the one that you really are worried about. And that's that guy. 